So today I'm going to be doing what I call the reverse miracle. I have here 151 proof rum and I don't drink so I want to turn this into water. So we all know it would be a miracle to turn water into wine but what about turning alcohol into water? So today I'm going to be showing you a cool way to turn alcohol into pure water. So any guesses on how I'm going to do that? So ethanol is made from two carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. And if you can give the molecule of ethanol enough energy, it will combine with the oxygen in the air to form water and CO2. And that's just a fancy way of saying that it burns. So when you burn ethanol, the products are water and CO2. So my goal here is to burn the alcohol, but I'm going to try to capture all of the water that comes off of it and be able to drink it after in pure water. But the hard part is that when you burn alcohol, it gives off a lot of heat. And that's the reason why when you normally see something burning, you don't think of it as water. That's because the water is extremely hot and so it's not condensing anywhere. So you have to find a way to take out all of the heat from that water so that it can turn from steam into liquid water. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to pour my ethanol at the bottom here and I'm gonna light it on fire and it will react with the oxygen in the air to form water and CO2 and the water will be extremely hot. And the main thing I want to do is I want to get all the energy out of it so before it just diffuses around the room and I lose it, I want to take the energy out of it so it condenses back into liquid water. And then I can collect my pure water in this cup here. And so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to have dry ice on top of this pan here and it should cool a lot of the water coming off of it enough to condense some of it and it should drip off the corner here and I'll collect it in my cup. So let's see if I can turn alcohol into pure water. Okay, let's light it on fire. It's burning. Our dry ice here. Okay, you can see the ice already forming at the top. That's the water condensing as a product of the combustion of ethanol here. And hopefully it should melt in a little bit and drip off here. Okay, we got a lot of ice forming up there. So that should be pure water in there. There should be no ethanol mixed with it. So it's easy to forget that when things burn, water is actually the product of combustion. It's just normally we don't see it because it's so extremely hot that it stays in the steam form and then it just diffuses into the regular room air and you never actually see it. Combustion is an extremely complicated process that we're still figuring out today. So the overall reaction is simple to write, but the intermediate steps that go on during combustion are very complicated. It involves hundreds of chemical species and thousands of reactions that happen almost instantaneously. Okay, switch to a metal dish here because I just broke my glass one because <laughs> it heated unevenly. So I have to note there are much better ways to do this condensation using a better heat exchanger, but they're expensive and this is a really easy setup to do it. Okay, so I've got my hard-earned pure water here. See what it tastes like. So it's a little bit cloudy, not sure why. Got about 20 milliliters of water. I probably burned about 100 milliliters of the alcohol. That means a lot of it was still lost to the air. I was only able to cool down around 20 milliliters of it. So there we go, reverse miracle. Alcohol turned into pure water. Mmm, it tastes like snow. That's exactly what it tastes like. Yeah, it tastes like when you eat snow. <laughs> Not a hint of alcohol at all. And before I go to teach you what not to do, here's how my first experiment went. Or should I call it, here's how to start a fire in three easy steps. Step one, make your setup very unstable. Step two, light your alcohol on fire.
And step three, knock it all over like you're a two-year-old knocking over a pile of blocks. And there you have it, how to start your garage on fire. No, but seriously, be careful if you ever do stuff like this. In fact, don't do anything you ever see me do. That's a good rule of thumb. So you can see that through combustion, you're able to turn pretty much anything with carbon in it into pure water and CO2. So you can see that even when you light a candle with just wax in it and it burns, you can collect the water off of that, although it's much slower than what I did here. For example, if I take a candle and put it in a high pressure chamber and let it burn in there for a little bit, it'll convert a lot of the wax into water and CO2. And then when I decrease the pressure, that water will condense out of the air and you can see a cloud form. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lit out the pressure quickly and we should see some condensation quickly form in the air. Three, two, one. Oh, that's so cool. Look at that. So this again is just due to the combustion of the wax forming water and CO2 in the air. And this is the exact reason why sometimes you see water dripping out of the end of your tailpipe. Because even in your car, the products of combustion are again water and CO2. Although because of improper burning and other impurities that are in gasoline, you get a lot of dangerous byproducts. But the main products of the combustion are water and CO2. And if your tailpipe's cold enough, it will condense the water out of the air and you'll see it dripping out of the tailpipe. I should mention that the way I was doing this means that I was also collecting humidity from the air also, not just from the combustion products. You can tell this because if you just leave a block of dry ice out, you'll see that pretty soon ice just starts to form around it, and that's the water from the air condensing around the dry ice. But it forms at a much slower rate than when you have a fire burning underneath it because the fire is generating water in the air. Okay everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet, and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out, and I'll see you next time.